Hey guys, Trevor Goodwin from T Nutrition, and I'm here today with the Gorilla Chemist <laughs> in the flesh <laughs> in sunny Florida. <laughs> and today we're going to go over um, different sources of choline, um, diff sorry, different choline ingredients, um, and some N MAO inhibitors and some acetylchronolase, acetylchronolesterase inhibitors as well. Um, I'm not going to do the talking today. It's over to the the man himself with the uh, the education, the knowledge, and the degrees. So, I think we'll start with um, the three most commonly used choline sources. Mm -hmm. Just a brief explanation of them each. Okay, so choline itself is uh, on its own. It doesn't do a whole lot. It gets acetylated in your body, turns it into acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter, which helps for excitatory function of your brain. So, um, enhanced thinking, cognitive function, stuff like that. Choline by tartrate is uh, number one, the cheapest form of choline, and it's not very bioavailable in as far as, uh, I believe it gets absorbed way down in your stomach, uh, way down in your colon almost, or right before, not your colon, I'm sorry, you're in your intestines, and but it doesn't get, it doesn't cross your blood brain barrier because choline is positively charged. Yeah. So, because your blood brain barrier is more you know fat soluble the compounds go through it or lipophilic compounds being positively charged it's hard to get a molecule through that blood brain barrier like choline so what the industry has done is come out with other ones that are more fat soluble that do go through that do cross the blood brain barrier like alpha gpc yep. and cdp choline yep. or citicoline is the trademark brand so alpha gpc Essentially, they took glycerol, which is the backbone of all fat, fatty acids. They added a fatty acid group and then added a, like actually a phospholipid group and then attached the choline molecule to that. So now you have this greasy phospho, phospholipid attached to the choline, attached to glycerol so that it can cross the blood brain barrier. The bad thing about alpha GPC is that it's only a 50% material. The good thing is it's 40% choline by weight yeah, yeah. so you have to look for a strong enough dose you need to know that you're only getting 50% out of the alpha GPC because it is a liquid or it's almost a liquid at standard temperature and pressure so a lot of times they use a carrier or spray on or something so that it goes through into a powder form so if you get 300 milligrams of alpha GPC you're really getting 150 milligrams and so it is 40% choline by weight yeah. But if you take the weight of the whole thing and take it, it's only 20, really 20% 20 yeah, choline. Yeah, yeah. So it's still more than CDP choline, which is 18% choline by weight. Yeah. Uh, Citicoline or CDP choline is a choline molecule that's attached to the nucleoside um, cytosine. And so this molecule can cross through the blood brain barrier because it's a giant, um, a, like similar to an adenosine ring, but it's a cytosine ring, so it's it's very lipophilic. It can cross your blood-brain barrier. It's attached to the sugar molecule as well, so this is a full nucleotide attached to choline. So it's very expensive. It's the most expensive yeah. of all the choline sources. I personally like it the best. I think that it has this effect that I don't get from alpha GPC personally. Yeah. I agree. And a good starting dose, I would look for at least 200 milligrams. Anything under that, really not going to do a whole lot. I've experimented almost up to a gram, and I think yeah. that gram dose is a lot, and I think it works really well. Yeah. Um, alpha GPC, like I said, works well too. That's considered, a lot of people consider that the best choline source. Uh, it's, a, it's a great topic to talk about. What, um, I, alpha, yeah. Alpha GPC dosage, would you say 600? I know that's, that's probably one of the most common common air dosages that's right. found in, in pre-workout products. Right, I would say that because you need to get at least 300 yeah. of the active yeah. choline source for it to do much. So I, I do like uh, a higher dose of that. I know Skywalk uses 800 yeah. In, yeah. Their, uh, in their two-scoop formula, which you can definitely feel. Mm -hmm. Interestingly about choline, another way to increase acetylcholine is by taking acetyl-L-carnitine. Yeah because essentially you just, that gets deacetylased and then it reacetylates to choline. So you're essentially providing, you're not providing choline, but you're providing the acetyl group, which can now bond to choline to produce acetylcholine. Choline, so yeah. that's why um, acetyl L-carnitine is in a lot of nootropic and pre-workout products as well. Mm -hmm. 
So just moving back to um, dosages, for example, if, if CDP choline or cytocholine was at 250 milligram and alpha GPC was say at 600 milligram, what would the equivalent dosage of um, choline by tartrate, which is obviously 40% um, by weight um, and has a low bioavailability, so it doesn't cross the blood blood brain barrier well, what dosage would you, if you put alpha GPC at 600, cytocholine at 250, what dose would you say is equivalent to them to in choline by tartrate form? I would it's, an, say, it's, it's an open, it's an interesting question. <laughs> I, I have colleagues that swear by a gram and a half or two grams of yeah. choline by tartrate okay. and they, they love it. Uh, I personally have never taken that much before. I've always just used either alpha GPC or yeah. CDP choline. Yeah. But uh, some people use the higher doses and, and notice that it works. I, like I said, I haven't tried it. But to get the amount of choline you're looking for, like you said, it's 600 of alpha GPC, mm -hmm. which is 300 active, mm -hmm. which at 40% of, of that is not what? 120 six, milligrams. Right, 6, correct, 120. Yeah. So to get 120 milligrams of choline, yeah, I, w I would say, unfortunately, you do need a, a large dose of the bitartrate. Mm. Even though the equivalent is 40%, you, yeah. you would say it's the same. The bioavailability is not there. So you need to take that into account when, when deciding which choline source is for you. Perfect. Um, which moves us nicely onto the, the next kind of element of a, of a good um, pre-workout that, that contains good nootropics. Um, let's talk a bit about MAO, essentially. I can never pronounce it, but... Monoamine oxidase. That's the one, my man. Go on, fire away. <laughs> so monoamine oxidase is the enzyme that converts a monoamine, which is one amino group, into usually a ketone group. Um, it oxidizes it from a amine to an, uh, an oxygen. So it breaks it down in the body. And so we want to prevent that if we're using stimulants that have monoamines like two amino or some of your PEA derivatives um, so that you can use compounds like hortidine, which is NN dimethyl tyramine, or some some people use N methyl tyramine. Both of those bind to monoamine oxidase, and through sterics, which essentially are the methyl groups are big and bulky, and so they kind of block the enzyme from binding to this molecule, and that prevents it from breaking down your monoamines for a little bit. They're not, obviously it's not a permanent thing, yeah. but it does extend the half life or the active life of some of these compounds. And so it, I believe it is worth taking. Plus, monoamines are also dopamine, which is something that makes you feel good, and serotonin is also one. So you you kind of increase your dopamine levels indirectly by increasing your monoamine oxidase inhibitors. So you all can get a nootropic effect that way as well, and a slight euphoric effect. I think they work well with some of the stims that we use in products. Yep. I, uh, hortidine I like personally. I think at a real high dose, maybe like 200, 300 yep. milligrams, you can okay. really feel it. Most yeah. people put somewhere between 50 and 150. Yeah, correct, yeah. But I think at, at least 150, I think, or more will do is a nice dose to increase um, the monoamines that you have in your system. Cool, cool. Um, let's talk about uh, acetylchronolesterase inhibitors. So. Uh, for example, huperzine A is probably mm -hmm. the most common used in the industry. Right. Um, essentially, that helps prevent the breakdown of acetylcholine. Yes. Over to you. <laughs> acetylcholine esterase inhibitors are exactly what they sound like. Is yep. they they per, um, esterase means that they break apart the ester. So these these compounds hydrolyze choline and acetylcholine and and break it down inside your body and. So by taking an inhibitor of this enzyme, in theory, you will have more acetylcholine floating around your brain to give you more cognitive function and things like that. So uh, huperzine A is probably the most common one, like you said. Yeah. The dose, some people get sick off of it. So mm -hmm. if it's mm -hmm. too high of a dose, it can cause um, nausea or some people just get sick from it. I've <clears throat> never had an issue with it. To me, a standard dose is standardized if it's standardized at one percent yeah if you use three three milligrams you get 300 micrograms, micrograms. which is what i like to put in yeah. products yeah. i think works pretty well you don't need a lot of it it is yeah. very potent it's very very expensive too yeah if, if you're just buying that ingredient so look for a dose that makes sense i wouldn't look for something that has 
you know, a very small amount, like 50 micrograms or no. 100 micrograms. I don't think that's going to do a whole lot. Let's talk about, I know we, we touched on it earlier, and we'll touch on it tomorrow when we do a full breakdown of, of, of your pre um, for, for YouTube, not for Instagram, but let's talk about canna. Um, so canna is uh, Skeletium tortuosum. Mm -hmm. um, the extract you use is a, is a two to one extract, um, but it's not necessarily about the, um, the, the extract as such, it's about the, the standardization for Misembrine. Yes, um, Misembrine. Yeah, that's the one. I'll let you take over and then I'll, I'll comment. Come on. So the kana is is an interesting um, ingredient. It I believe it's Polynesian, or not Polynesian. Where um, what kind? I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Indian. You know, Indian Indian, tribes. Indonesia. I thought it was somewhere like Indonesia, or somewhere that they they chew it. Yeah. And it gives this, you know, it's it it has a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor that naturally occurs in there. And it also has releasing agents. And what are releasing agents? Well, they release things like dopamine and serotonin and things like that and, and other catecholamines. So by taking this, you not only get more serotonin released and then you block its uptake, similar to how the pharmaceuticals work, only not to that same effect. And so you get a sense of well-being, slight euphoric feeling from it, as well as being a releasing agent. So you do get the catecholamines like uh, norepinephrine and dopamine from that. And to me, I think it works well with other stimulants. It, it worked really well with me when I tried it with two amino. It works well with caffeine, hygienamine, um, and, and dimethyl phenylethylamine yep. citrate I like. It works well with that one. So I think it, it just, it adds a new dimension to the pre-workout, which is why I wanted to use it. Yep. And like you said, if you have a two to one, a five to one, a 10 to one extract, you can't, you can't really prove that. You could just, you have to trust someone that says they took 10 kilos yeah. of one thing to make one kilo of the other. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you have the actives in there yeah. at a higher dose. Yeah. Hopefully it does, but sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. And so you look for something that's standardized. The one we use is, is standardized to um, no less than 0.5% of the active alkaloids. And so you, you do get it's a small dose, but we used a gram of the actual kana, which is mm. along the lines of the dose of the people that use it and chew it every day. Yeah. So between a thousand and fifteen hundred milligrams. So I thought a gram was a, a good sweet spot where you it's noticeable. Or some brands only use twenty five milligrams or so because it is an expensive ingredient. There is a there are papers showing that they have effect at twenty five milligrams. I don't know if it's enough of an effect to feel with all the other things. I haven't tried it that low to with with some of the things we were working with, but I know that if you take large enough amounts of it, you definitely feel the difference between taking it and not taking it. Okay, cool. So thanks very much for watching. Thank you to the Gorilla Chemist. My pleasure to be here. And make sure you tune into next week's Weekly Tea. Hit that subscribe button. And remember, all the products you see today are available at teenutrition.com with free delivery. In his van. <laughs> <laughs> Private joke. <laughs> <laughs>